guys, Crew Neil here, and sitting to my left is my business partner, also co-owner of MTK. This is Edwin Lopez. And uh, what we're doing today is our first podcast episode, guys. It's called Muay Thai Save Me. And our mission is to interview people to um, share their trials and tribulations and things that they've had to overcome, you know, why they chose Muay Thai, and just to share like a lot of the, just the experiences that they overcome on a daily basis. Hey guys, so a little bit about me. Uh, I've been training Muay Thai for 33 years now. I started when I was nine years old, uh, competed till I was 28. I started fighting when I was 14, retired at 28. Uh, through those 14 years of competing, I have 33 fights. I fought amateurly and professionally. And through my career, I'm able to win three titles, uh, one title at 175, one at 165. And back when I was younger, it was like, I think I was like 135 at that time. And uh, yeah, just I've been doing Muay Thai for 33 years now, guys. And like my business partner said, my name is Edwin Lopez and um, my best friend. Can we be best friends at 42? Of course. Yeah. So my best friend here, business partner, um, I was training with uh, Crew Neo since 2004. We went hardcore for eight years and uh, now we're business partners. And I'm just happy to be part of this uh, journey with you, brother. I love it, buddy. I love it, man. Couldn't, couldn't choose a better partner, but I agree. And to my right, we have David Trujillo. He is one of our fighters and on, and he's also one of our trainers now as well. And um, David, why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself? You know, where, where you, uh, where you're from, um, you know, a little bit about your personal history, you know, um, all that good stuff. Okay. What's up, everybody? My name is David Trujillo, also known as the Predator. It's my fight name. I'm, I represent MTK. And, um, honestly, I'm just a cool, chill dude that likes to fight. And oh man, I'm messing up. <laughs> but I'm just a cool dude. Likes to fight. Like to chill. I like to have fun. Um, I'm originally from the valley. I grew up right here in Sun Valley, so okay. it's like a five minute drive, a block away from the Sun Valley Park. Went to high school, Polytechnic High School. Okay. Um, yeah, just grew up right here in the little okay. ghetto. Okay. And um, we always like to ask everyone, what brought you to Muay Thai? What what intrigued you? Because you could have chosen any sport, any martial art. Why Muay Thai? What what stood out to you about Muay Thai? Honestly, what what wanted what I when I originally saw was uh, an old school Pride video. Mm. So I growing up, I we would watch boxing a lot. So mm. I would I thought that's just how you fought. Mm. So. One day I came across a pride video and I was like, oh, let me see this. These guys are in fight gear. Let me see this. And I seen one dude get kicked in the head and knocked out. And it blew my mind. I never knew you could fight like that. Ever since then, I was intrigued and I wanted to know what fight style that was. And it turned out to be Muay Thai. And ever since then, I just had a desire to do it. Wow. And then I turned 21. I tried. It wasn't taking it serious. Yeah. Five years later, I'm here at MTK and we mm -hmm. fighting now. So nice. I love yeah. that. You know, just to dig a little deeper, though, you said back in 21, you said you tried it, but it just didn't work out. What was going on during that time? Why did it not work out? Honestly, I was more into like partying and drinking mm -hmm. and then just, yeah, really just partying and drinking. Okay. Drinking was my thing at that time. And, you know, just like every other uh, 21, you know, you know, you're yeah. just in. You're just immature, like to party and drink a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I wasn't taking it serious. I thought I was Superman. I can go and drink and yeah. party, go Muay Thai, work out, and it just never worked out. And then I kept getting into trouble. Okay. And then I got a DUI and then another one. And then, yeah, it was just the worst after that. And then I just took a break. I see. Fell from like an emotional. Okay. I felt all emotional, depressed, and then, yeah, I wasn't able to train no more. I just got deeper into the drinking. Ah, uh, I see. Do you feel like, um, like if someone, like if you could go back, right, you could talk to yourself right now, what would you say to that 21-year-old David? I was like, man, dude, you got to just love yourself. Um, quit, quit the boozing, quit boozing. Quit hanging out with the people that you're hanging out with mm. and just try to find people that are like on the same exact mission as you. They mm. want to do good in life mm. and surround yourself with people that are like talk about money and want to be millionaires and stuff like that. Because before I was just hanging out with people that would just drink, mm. do drugs, bullshit. They wouldn't do nothing, you know? So like mm. I would go back and tell myself to just love yourself mm -hmm. and everything will be all right. 
just quit the drinking now. Mm, nice. That's what I would tell myself because nice. I'd be professional right now. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love that because you know it's there's a lot of people out there that might be dealing with that same issue, and I think hearing someone who fights now, right, and is really passionate about it and is really, um, and just if you guys don't know, like David has really come a long way. This guy, just to get his first fight with MTK, he had to train for two and a half years. Every, right? day. Every day. And multiple Every classes. Day. This guy, classes a very day. hard worker, um, never gave up, just constantly kept coming, no matter how sore he was. Um, David, you want to touch in on that, you know, because we were just chatting earlier about that, like how sore you felt. You know, do you have any words of encouragement for people that are just starting out in Muay Thai right now and they're like super sore? What could you say to someone like that? You know, and they're starting to feel like, oh, man, I don't know if this is for me. This is too hard. Do you have any words of encouragement for them? I would tell them just to keep going. Like everything in life is hard in the beginning. And I understand like showing up here, doing the workouts, beating up the bags and stuff like that. When you're not used to it, your shin bones hurt, mm -hmm. your knuckles hurt, like the workouts are intense for the body but i i would tell them just to keep going mm -hmm. because those summer bodies are built in the winter time and oh, that's man. what you want that's your goal that's everybody's goal to look good yeah. and then not only that it just just try to like motivate yourself you at the end of the day it's all on you mm -hmm. so you got to just tell yourself like yo man i could do this and then when you look around and you see other people going hard is it should motivate you mm -hmm. especially when you see your coaches like telling you like come on you can do this you can do yeah. this it's because you guys know that we can. Mm -hmm. And I would I would just tell them to keep going, man. Screw what people think. Mm -hmm. Just focus on you. Focus on your goals and just keep telling yourself, like, I got this. I, I, I like what you said about that, too. Like, forget about what anyone else says. I, I love that because it goes back to what you said earlier, right? Like, surround yourself with better people. Yeah. Because right? your influence is a huge role in do you succeed or not. Yes, right, would you yes, sir. Yes, that? sir. I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, did you have? Yeah, something? yeah. David, you said when you were 21, you watched the Pride video, right? And that's kind of what inspired you. And yes. then it took you five years to actually take action because you did it for a little bit. Then you kind of quit. Yes, sir. What happened? What triggered you back in those five after those five years? Like what really got you back and said, you know what? I'm going to try it again. Honestly, I was just drinking too much, man. And I felt like I ended up in a church home as well because of my drinking. And then like I had like a little experience right there. And it set me straight for a little bit. And then, like, I left at home and then I just started hanging out with the, the same crowd that I used to. And I thought I can, like, work it out and I wouldn't be doing that no more because of this and that. And then, nope, I just fell. And I, I just got stuck into, like, the drinking and doing Xanaxes and stuff like that. And, like, I got really depressed, bro. And then one day I just realized, like, I, I just kept making mistake after mistake. And one day I... I couldn't live with the mistakes no more. And I drowned myself in alcohol one day. And then I just had a realization that I became the person, the piece of crap person. Everybody told me as a kid, I was going to grow up to be. And when I realized that, when I had that realization at my house, I just broke down in tears. And I was just like, yo, man, I don't want to drink no more. Like, and I just was asking the universe or God, whatever you guys want to call them. I was asking like, man, you know, like, please take this addiction away. Like take the take the taste of alcohol out of my mouth because like i'd wake up and I, the thought of alcohol would eat away at my brain until i went and drank mm. so when i had that realization that i became this person everybody said i was going to be it broke me it mm. broke it like broke my spirit everything mm. and i was just telling myself like nah man i'm gonna change and then i just remembered how much i loved i loved muay thai training at 21 and then it was a trip because i would work here down the street and then uh -huh. I would always pass this gym and I could, I was telling myself all the time, if I could just stop drinking and get in that gym, I could stay sober. Mm -hmm. I could just stay sober. And then, yeah, when I realized that I became that person, man, I just decided to change. And that's when I walked in here. Mm -hmm. I was almost 200 pounds when I walked in here. Yeah. So, and, and how much, how much do you weigh now? For those, for those people that don't know, yeah, for everybody that don't know, man, I, I weigh in at 135. Wow. 135 wow. so and i i'm fluctuating at 145 right now 140 135 i'm i'm there now yeah. from 200 to 135 so. and, and just so you guys that don't know this guy is chiseled okay yeah. like he's, I'm he's going, he he puts the work in guys there's no there's and, no hiding behind it and can i just say something i mean i see you train all the time and you know i recently started working out again 
Uh, you, you guys know my journey. I just lost 28 pounds in the last couple Amazing. of months. Amazing. Um, but it's the inspiration. Congrats. When I see you training out there, I'm like, I want to look like David. That's I, so, I want that, you to know that. Like, that's I'm like, so, that's I told, cool, I told, like, Ken, yeah, I told yeah. Neil, I'm like, I want to look like David. I'm like, you wow. know what? I'm not dead. I'm 42. It doesn't matter. You know, he's 10, 15 years younger than me, but I want to look like that. And I got a chance and I'm, I'm still healthy and I want to do it. And you've inspired me, man. Every time I see you working out, I'm like, I want to look like that. And the fact that you got the body that you have just doing Muay Thai is just it's amazing. It's pure Muay Thai. People ask me all the time, like, dude, do you still go to speakeasy and lift weights or you go to 24-hour fitness? I'm like, I don't lift no weights. The weights I lift here are like what we got over here at the gym, you know? Like, I don't I don't lift no weights no more. I'm just here training Muay Thai two, three classes a day, every single day, like I keep telling everybody. Mm -hmm. And my body looks the way it looks because of Muay Thai. And I'm, I'm proud of that. For real. That's awesome. Yeah, that's super awesome. proud of that. That's, that's yeah, cool. we're we're really proud of you. Yeah. Um, what what would you say is the biggest battle you've had to overcome in order to stay as disciplined as you have? Because that takes a lot, right? I mean, to come literally every day, at least six days a week, you're taking multiple classes, and they're not easy classes. They're hard classes, and you're giving above extra effort. You know, what would you say is the biggest obstacle you have to overcome to keep you disciplined like you have been? The biggest obstacle for me that I had to overcome, I would say was like quit procrastinating. Like, you know, like it was one of those things where it's like you're either gonna do this or you're not, you know. So I was I would have to get over procrastinating because I would be like, okay, I'm gonna go do this and then I wouldn't do it. Or I would sign up for classes in the beginning mm -hmm. and kind of get scared and discouraged and it was like okay I'm gonna unclass Oh, there's there's not that many people. It's only less people. I'm not I'm not gonna go. Uh, so I had to get over that. Mm. And then once I did, I was able to sign up for more classes. And I didn't. It didn't even bother me no more. If mm. I was the only one, I thought to myself, "Well, cool. I'll get a private lesson. Mm. You know, and learn more." Yeah. So that I would have the I would I would say procrastinate and just okay. I, that was my biggest thing. How How did you overcome procrastination? Like, what did you do? You have any words that you could share? That what What are some words that you told yourself to like you know what that's it like just do it like do you have any words that you would say to yourself any expressions no honestly crew i would just look at you and see how high of the standards you had and it would just inspire me like dude man like this guy knows what he knows and it's like he's so disciplined and he's just you were always just like you were always like that and i that inspired me and i was like man dude if i gotta get it right i gotta be like this guy and i gotta take his advice because i knew that you know what you know and like your years of experience in muay thai was just like amazing to me and then like the technique you teach me i know it works because like, i fight using the yeah, ring you know absolutely so yeah like just seeing you and how disciplined you were it inspired me and that's what made me stop procrastinating i started signing up for classes and then when i told you i wanted to fight and you yeah. gave me that look like oh okay i knew like i had to um i had to prove it mm -hmm. so that that there too was like okay Let's go sign up for classes. Let's go hard. We mm -hmm. got to go hard to impress crew because mm -hmm. I want to fight for real. Mm -hmm. And I finally got my chance. You know? yeah. Wow, so, that's yeah, great. That's it great. was you. It was you. Can okay. I just say something, David? That um, You know, you've taken on that role now, right? That you're a role model to a lot of our students, even though if you don't know it, like we hear it in the back end. We hear when you're fighting. We hear when the ticket sales go on for your fights, how people are looking forward to seeing you, how people want to be like you. So. Just the way you saw Neo and see Neo as an inspiration, people are talking about you. And the fact that you're coming on board as a coach mm -hmm. and you're going to do that, like it is the talk of the town right now. Mm -hmm. We are excited. And, and and it's, and it's good and it should, right? Because yeah. that means that you care. And um, I, I'm excited. I can't wait to take one of your privates and to be one of, inside your classes and everything. But just know that there's a lot of students right now that look up to you, have been looking up to you and, and they're just in awe just to know that we're taking those extra steps and those you know for the future of the company and mtk just to have you on board you know to give you know because you know the best thing you can do is just teach what you've learned and give it to another person yes sir so we're excited i'm excited you know what's crazy you say that is because um not too long ago one of our members had walked up to me and, and it was it was a trip because i was i thought to myself man i'm literally here on earth to inspire people to to chase their wildest dreams and make it come true I'm here to motivate people to become disciplined because motivation is temporary. You know, discipline lasts a lifetime. And I'm here to entertain people. And I was like, okay. And then I thought of that, right? And then not too long ago, one of our members had walked up to me, pulled me to the side and was like, yo, David, man, 
I just want to tell you, you inspire me, man, to chase my dreams and make them come true. You motivate me to become disciplined. And your fights are so entertaining, bro. I love watching you fight. I'm always going to be there if I can make it. I'm always going to buy a ringside ticket. And it didn't dawn on me until I was driving home. I was like, wow, bro. Like, this guy just literally said everything that I just thought of. And it made me cry. (laughs) You know, and I'm a tough, I'm pretty tough, but I don't cry. But like that one, that one hit me hard. And it just inspired me to keep going, man. Like it keeps, like if I can touch people like that, I know. And he has, he has the cojones to come and tell me that stuff. I know that there's other people too watching me and like getting inspired. So that motivates me to just keep going hard. Absolutely. But it is hard to show up every day. Absolutely. I want people to know that it's hard to show up every day. Yes. Just do it. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I love it, David. Just do that. <laughs> do you, you know, do you ever feel like when you look back in your life, uh, maybe even during those five years you weren't, do you ever feel like there was a moment um, that in your life that could have been avoided if you were training Muay Thai at that time? You know, because right now you say, Muay Thai has kept you sober, right? And you you have something to live for. You have something that inspires you every day. Was there something, a moment that you could think back right now? Man, if I was just doing Muay Thai, I could have totally avoided that. Yeah, if I was doing Muay Thai, if I would have just stuck in there at 21 and really took it serious and really like paid attention to what good of a gym I was in, because mm-hmm. your stepfather was there. And yes. Like I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. How like I didn't even know like how big of a name he had in the States, mm-hmm. you know, like. I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't know nothing. So like, if I would have just known that, I felt like I could just be professional. My whole life would have been like on point right mm-hmm. now, but it is what it is. Yeah. And now, now I'm doing it with you mm-hmm. and all you guys. And I'm excited, you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just who he's referring to is Crew Rex. Uh, Crew Rex is, you know, my stepdad and he's very well known in the Muay Thai community. And I thought, and even when he found out, he had no clue. I had no clue. But David walked in and he told me he always used to train at a gym before. And I asked him what gym and wait, double dose Muay Thai. That's where Crew X. And he was like, yeah, I used to train with Crew X. And I was like, David, do you know that Crew X is my stepdad? I'm known as in the community. This is that's Crew X's son. That's Crew Neil right there. He said, what? Yeah. His excitement lit yeah. up. His eyes lit up. And he was like, I knew this was the right gym for me. He knew he was in yeah. the right place. So it was kind of a cool connection. Like it didn't, you know, it didn't work out. Uh, that time but you know the universe brought us back together exactly you know I mean? and so exactly it's it's really cool it's a really amazing like yeah. it blows my mind all the time when i think about that and i tell my buddies about it they're all like for real yeah i'm like yeah dude like it's san Bernardino's way over there, yes. over there yes. and like i'm over here in the valley and i'm training with his stepson it's, once i found that out i was like okay yeah this is this is the universe telling me like this is the gym yeah and it is you know this is where it's at and you know what's funny too david um one of our other coaches coach parish crew x also played a significant role in his fighting career as well that's amazing and when he shared that with me i couldn't wait to tell him well did you know that crew Rex was my stepdad i'm known in this community as oh that's crew Rex's son he literally wait well, what <laughs> so he felt like this is the gym i need to be working for like yeah, he just felt man. like the universe brought him to the right location as that's well. how i felt when yeah. i found that out i was like oh yeah this is my gym like yeah. this is this is gonna be where i stand my flag and where i fight so yeah yeah i, I was that. that's excited like, and you know it's funny because you remind me a lot of, of myself when i bumped into uh mtk oh, same thing i was intimidated i would, i went in there that's when crew rex was was there back in the Van Nuys area and I was 24 and prior to that drinking drugs and chasing women yeah, and I just all this stuff. doing a, just a, a just a chaos you know and then I went in there and I and I still remember just being nervous and I remember wearing a bandana and everything <laughs> like I gotta change my life and I got so addicted I would train three yeah. four hours a day I wouldn't leave because I knew that if I left the chances of me doing bad yeah. habits or or lapsing or anything like that would be bad and i just clinged on to mtk and i for eight years i did it every single day we built a relationship mm-hmm. until you know i took a break but it helped me to guide me to a better life you know so and that's what it's doing for me right now like next year in july on the 16th it'll be four years no drinking wow. no drugs no that's nothing oh, so awesome. like i'm so i'm I, I take pride in that i don't know yeah that, that helps me out you should like knowing sure. that like i got that much sobriety i'm like fuck 
yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so amazing. Yeah, you've, I love come, it. you've come a long way. It's that's just hearing your story. You've definitely grown. You know, you become a better man. Yeah, you know, I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah, I love it. You know, and what stood out to you about him? Because you said you drove by us, but you know, there's there's other gyms out there you could have checked out. What stood out to you? Um, about MTK that you just kept coming back because you could have after a month you could have been, I don't know if this gym's right for me you could have went to another gym what kept you coming back to MTK every day okay so originally I was gonna go train at um uh, what is it uh, um the one on Van Nuys uh, no no not on Van Nuys it's Van Owen and mm-hmm. Violent mm-hmm. the Cali Muay Thai Academy I believe oh no no uh Muay Thai Academy I guess it's called yeah I was gonna go train there but then I would always pass this gym when I would work so I'd be like you know what. It's either this one or this one, but I heard a lot of good things about that one. I didn't really hear too much about this one. Mm. So I was going to go there, but I was like, that's too far. Like this one, I can walk to this Mm. gym. And I was like, you know what? For whatever reason, this one's just, it feels better. Just, Mm. I don't know what it was, but Mm. it just felt like it was a better choice for me to come here. Yeah. And I did. And then ever since then, I just, I just knew like when I seen you for whatever reason, the first time I spotted you, I just knew like, yeah, man, like, this is going to be my gym. Like, this guy, I have a feeling, like, knows it. Like, he's just badass. And I was like, okay, I'm going to train here. And honestly, that's just really what it was. It was it was walking distance from my house. Wow. Yeah, like, I could <laughs> literally walk here. Yeah. So uh, that's what it was like, okay, I'm going here. Okay. And then when I came here, met met you, met, met everybody, got to know, like, what we're about and everything. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's a solid gym. Mm. Solid. I'm staying here forever. <laughs> we love it. We love it. Yeah. We love it, Dave. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> so, David, we talked about you training. You literally trained for two and a half years, six days, sometimes seven days a week, multiple classes. You never stopped. Um, and then here comes the time I give you the green light. I'm like, all right, David, you're ready to fight. Um, tell us about your experience, you know, the training camp leading up to the day of the fight, the oh, ring ends, the uh, you got the gloves laced up now. The inspectors are like, You're next, David. You're standing up there. Um, tell us your experience, everything. Yeah, so when I was training for that fight, when I, and then when I when you first told me, like, okay, yeah, you can fight, I got a fight, you're gonna be fighting on the same card as Martin, that lit a fire under me i was like yes mm-hmm. and it inspired me to go hard but at the same time as we got closer to the fight i kept getting nervous i was like oh no this is for real yeah. and then i was like okay we're gonna keep going and then um yeah like when we just were doing in the fight camps i was like oh man this is like really tough this is more than i expected but i just felt i just felt like i could do this like i can really just change my life and yeah. do this uh, and then that's what kept me going and then when we were showing up to the weigh-ins and then we weighed in and then the next day I'm getting my hands wrapped and I was like, oh my God, this is for real. And yeah. then I went, I was the second belt, I believe. Yes. And then I went up and then I'm standing in there and I just, I just truly believed what I prayed in, what I prayed for. And then I just kept that like, you know, like I, I visualized myself doing this for three and a half years, two and a half, three years. Yeah. I was like, now I'm finally getting my opportunity. This is all the hard work I've ever put in. It all is going to be shown tonight, right now. And I was like, you know what, man? I just believe in what I prayed for. I'm going to hang on to this vision. I know I got great people behind me. And I'm just going to go and kill it. Just do my absolute best. And when we jumped into that ring and that fight started going, man, oh, boy, that was crazy. It was way more than I expected. There was times in the fight where I was, we were clenched up and Remember when how we spoke about it and you're like, David, I need you to visualize all the bright lights, yeah. all the people cheering and booing you, yeah. uh, me screaming uh, commands, you know, yeah. like I need you to visualize all this. And I had that moment when we were in the clinch. Um, I was thinking to myself, whoa, man, like I had just visualized this. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm now I'm starting to hear everybody screaming mm-hmm. and booing, you know, and I was yeah. like, wow, we had just spoke about this. Mm-hmm. And now I'm experiencing this. And then I was like, OK. I just got to win, bro. I just mm-hmm. got to keep going, keep fighting, keep striking, attack, block, and counter, mm-hmm. A, B, C. And I was just like, yeah. And then I just kept doing that. I had that split moment. In that, in that clinch, I had that split moment where I realized, man, dude, we visualized this. We talked about this. I'm experiencing it right now. And then once I had that realization, I was like, okay, I got this. I just got to keep boxing, keep my high guard, you know, just keep doing what I was told and going at it. And I remember every time I would teach him, he would come back and teach me. 
I get him in the clinch, need him, he would need me. So it was just a great experience, a, a wild one, one I'll never forget. And yeah. yeah, man, that just that was amazing that night. I, it was I don't even know, like it was just amazing. Do you, do you feel like um, okay, you fought the three rounds, fights over? How did you feel? Did you feel like oh my god, that was so fast? Like did you feel that way, or did you feel like wow, that was a long three rounds? Like how did you feel after the three rounds? It felt it felt a little a little fast, but at the same time, it felt like in the in the heated moments where it was like, man, this is tough. It's taking this is it almost over. Yeah. I felt like that, but then once it was all over, I was just feeling like, man, I was just <laughs> feeling like all this excitement, all this like, just like all this rage, because I was thinking to myself like, man, I'm here to make a statement, like you said, right? And all the rage came from like everybody telling me like you're a piece of crap person. This is what you're going to be. And to like, finally like embrace who I was that night. And like, and like, just to see how happy everybody was and how, like how I felt, I was just, that's why I was roaring. Like, oh, my God. because it felt so good to like prove to everybody, like, man, dude, I am a superstar. Like yes. I've always felt like I had this energy mm -hmm. and Muay Thai is like really brought it out. And after that fight, I was just feeling so amazing. Like, it was just like a blessed moment, to be honest with you. I love that. And especially when, like, when you picked me up and you were walking around the ring with me, I was just like, what's going on? <laughs> but I knew, I knew, like, oh, man, I won this. Like, I had to win this. And then, sure enough, they let us know that we won. And it was just, like, the most bliss moment ever. Like, it was yeah. just... It felt like it was God given, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. And then us, uh, you telling me to visualize and me visualizing, yeah. and then actually coming true mm -hmm. was just amazing. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was and David, how was the uh, your first experience or your fight from your your most recent one that you had? Do you still have those that 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 butterflies, or how how do you process it now that you've had a couple fights under your belt? Like, you mean, like, me going into the... Yeah, movie? well, the first one, right, it was nerve-wracking. You've never done it before, yeah. as opposed to your last fight that you had. How are your nerves now as opposed to your first fight? Now I just get nervous. The The reason why I get nervous is not to fight, because I'm not really scared to fight anybody. If I truly have to fight you, I will. And that's just because I'm a man, and that's how we are, you know? Yeah. But um, now I just get... I Honestly, I get nervous and a little scared because I know that I'm putting my health on the line. I'm putting my life on the line for other entertainment, for other people's entertainment, you know? And that's the only thing that like really gets me nervous. But yeah, I just I just know what I visualize and know what I pray for. And I truly believe that this is what I'm supposed to do in life. So I just walk out there in full confidence and I just remember what I what I prayed for. And I just go. And then I know I got good people in my corner. So telling me good things to do, you know what to do and kind of guiding me in the right path. So I'm just, I don't really get nervous no more, but other than the fact that I know that I'm putting my health on the line for others in entertainment, that's kind of what scares me. I, I love that he touched base on it too. Cause a lot of people don't forget that, that fighters are putting their health on the line every time they step into that ring. Yeah, you know, right? People forget that. And it's for other people's entertainment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's what you say is your biggest why right now. Why you do it? Why I do it is because I keep finding out new things about myself. That's why I keep keep up going up there and fighting, keep going and training is because I keep I keep finding out beautiful things about myself. Like I know now that Muay Thai taught me too, like never to give up, like life in general, like mm -hmm. don't give up because I had thoughts of like giving up and stuff. Yeah. But like Muay Thai taught me to never, ever give up. Like you keep going hard, bro. Mm -hmm. Like keep smashing through walls. Like you were saying last night at the dinner, like keep smashing through walls, keep keep uh, overcoming obstacles and boundaries and just keep growing. And, and that's what Muay Thai's done. Like it just keeps me, it just keeps me going, man. I don't know. I love it. That's great. I don't even know how to answer these questions. Oh, <laughs> you didn't make no difference. You didn't make no difference. There's people out there that, you know, you have, you underestimate like the thoughts and the doubts and the things. And I think hearing it from someone like you that has an awesome story that has made a complete 360 change for their life. I think you will definitely be a great inspiration to others. You know what I mean? Who has gone through what you've gone through or is going through what you're going through and hearing your story, man, if David could do that, I could do that because you've been a great inspiration for not only our members, for my business partner, 
but just for people that are listening right now, you know, the people that you can touch through your message, through your story. I think it's epic. I love yes. it. Yeah. I love it as well. Yeah. If you could tell someone who's listening to this podcast right now that may be feeling intimidated, I don't know if this gym is right for me. You know, I've been here for less than a month. I don't know. I'm not feeling it. Do you have any like um, words to say to them? What would you say to someone? If I if someone's coming here and they feel like this is not the right gym, I would tell them like, man, listen, God or the universe put it on your heart to come train Muay Thai. And for whatever reason, you chose this gym. This, and then you, you might feel intimidated now. But if you just get to break out of your shell and get to know everybody and learn what we're all about and how much everybody really cares around here, mm-hmm. you would you would you would you would change your mind and be like, OK, yeah, I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep coming up. I'm going to keep showing up because that's what it did for me. So nice. I would tell them, yeah, you know, just just keep coming. <laughs> just keep right. showing up. <laughs> just keep showing up. I love You'll that. love it. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, David, for taking time to come uh, do this podcast with us. We really appreciate it. Awesome, Chris. Hope you, hope you had some fun. I with did. Us. I had some. I had a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you, Chris. Yeah, of course, it. of course. And I always say, you know, if you if your story could touch someone who might be going through that experience that you were dealing with twenty one uh, back when you were twenty one, it was totally worth it. You yeah, it's I mean? totally worth it. Muay Thai changed my life for real. It saved me for reals i love that i love more time i love that all right guys well that concludes our our podcast for today you know we thank david trujillo for coming in and just remember guys uh this podcast is it's called Muay Thai Save Me. And our mission is just to share people's stories and trials and tribulations that they go through on a daily basis but don't forget to subscribe on our channel all right you click on the link below and uh stay tuned for the next week's podcast see you guys soon